Welcome to Mega Neg Gaming and today's PC review I'm going to continue with trying to knock out reviews for the earliest games I had and then I'll move on to tomorrow's games being a pair of 2019 releases so the first game I had outside of text based games I for the for my first PC it's going back to when I was 8 years old I'm 34 now it was a game called Catacomb Abyss 3D also one by Catacomb Abyss the sequel to Catacomb 3D featured the same main character and he's on a new adventure quoting Wikipedia since his defeat some of the nemesis is evil that some of the nemesis minions have built a mausoleum in his honor fearful of the dark mages return townspeople hire Everhale to descend below and end the evil environments are more varied than Catacomb 3D featuring crypts, gardens Mines and aqueducts, volcanic regions, other locales. This game was developed by ID Software, published by Softdisk, designed by Car John Carmack, and programmed by John Carmack, John Romero, and Jason Wachlowiak which I might have butchered that name with and composed by Robert Prince III also known as Bobby Prince it's released in November 1991 and it's a single player first person shooter just to put that release in perspective two other well known first person shooters of the time are Wolfenstein 3D in the first Doom game. Wolfenstein 3D was released May 5th of 1992 and Doom was released December 10th of 1993. So this is a game predating both Wolfenstein 3D and Doom. And it is for MS-DOS. And in the in the Catacomb Adventure series, the next two games were Car Catacomb Armageddon and Catacomb Apocalypse. Two games which I haven't played in all that much detail. So let's go ahead and switch over to the game. starts off with this little graphic telling you what you're doing start off in a cemetery equipped with your wits and the secret knowledge of magic you venture forth on your quest to upset the dark schemes of nemesis your arch rival and this is having some issues in DOS box it looks like so we will just as you move forward it tells you how to control it. Half the screen do is taken up by the interface as a picture of your person. Start off being able to shoot the those and then there's places where you can shoot to you know, unlock chests. Move around you need to look for walls that look differently because you can shoot those to find access to new places a good place to start shooting would be the ones that look like windows move around yeah there are some RPG elements to this game good little scrolls you can read the grave digger keeps the key to the garden with his pet bats
So you do a lot of do a lot of moving around, collecting keys, find your way through the game, collecting stuff from chests, gaining new powers. Need a blue key to go there, and I have a red key. This game does move, the movement is very slow. Oh, pet bats. You know what that means? There's probably a blue key around somewhere. And the red key probably goes here. Oh, I need a green key. Oh. You do have to kind of spam the shots from time to time to find the secret areas. Some are clearly denoted, some require spamming. So yeah, it's a lot of this. The levels do change somewhat as you move on through. Monsters are highly pixelated, but for the time this was impressive. This was an actual 3D world I could move around as, as this mage character. That's a cemetery entrance. But yeah, the little helpful hints are actually tied to where you are on the level. So yeah, the movement is rather clunky considering a lot of modern games have came out since. There we got the green key. But if you you can figure out the controls to figure out ways to move faster. You can purchase up this game and all the other catacomb games for five ninety nine on GOG. Which I'd say for the price it's definitely worth it. Use the red key. And see as you get hurt, your person's face changes. So yeah, it's a, for the time this was a very impressive game, and there are quite a few levels to go through. Environments do change, they are ugly as far as modern games go, but the graphic style does have some old school charm to it. So we'll go ahead and exit out. You can find more levels if you just go on YouTube or other places. So. At the time, this game was rated pretty well, despite of having rather primitive EGA graphics. So where would I actually put the game as far as putting on a list for all games available in modern times? Compared to all games ever released, I do have a bias towards first-person shooters and RPGs. This combines both of them in a way that's enjoyable, but I do recognize that time hasn't been all that forgiving to this game. As such, I'm going to give this one a 5.5 .5 out of 10. It's slightly above average. It's still a fun experience. And I'm going to put it in between, sh bo right below Shadow Tower for the PS1 and right above Call of Cthulhu Shadow of the Comet for the PC. Like I said, if you enjoy old, per per series, old first person shooters with RPG elements, you'll probably find something enjoyable here. If not, you're likely to get bored with it. And the controls are a bit clunky, especially compared to many modern games, so you might find yourself getting frustrated as a result of that.
But overall, it's a fun little game from the past. So please like, subscribe, check out my other reviews, and have a great day.